Did HTC finally get it right? Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocket Now, and this is our full review of the HTC One. Let's get to it. HTC really needs the One to be a success. The last two years have been tough for the company because of lackluster sales of devices, especially of last year's flagship, the One X, which we found to have problems with camera performance and lagginess in the operating system. Fortunately, the HTC One is truly different, not only from anything HTC has done in the past, but from other devices from other manufacturers such as Samsung and LG. The phone itself, made from glass, plastic, and a lot of aluminum, is striking. The 4.7-inch 1080p display is flanked by two amplified speakers that together produce the loudest sound we've ever heard from a smartphone. The sound is not only loud, but clear. We weren't able to get the speakers to distort, whether on a call with speakerphone or listening to heavy metal at loud volumes. The One also has Beats Audio, which in this case provides an equalizer for boom sound, boosting treble and mid-range. It just sounds great. Turning the phone to the sides, we see that HTC did the same trick with the One that it did with the DNA and even the One X. The edges are extremely thin, and then the phone tapers to a larger thickness, in the case of the One, at 9mm around the back. While 9mm might seem high for depth, the phone feels very thin in the hand. It's also relatively light at 143 grams, which is 10 grams heavier than the Galaxy S3. This extra weight translates to a high quality feel, reinforced by the cool aluminum backing that looks as nice as it feels. The One is available in black and silver, and we heavily recommend the silver because it does a fantastic job at deterring fingerprints and dirt. Because of this, the HTC One in silver always looks like it just came out of the box. In an obvious reflection of the iPhone 5's design, the HTC One has chamfered edges, which gives the otherwise brawny looking phone a more elegant balance. We haven't been using the HTC One long enough to comment on the durability of the chamfered edges and the phone in general, but we have reason to believe that it's much less fragile than the iPhone 5. The phone is well weighted in the hand. The rounded back allows the phone to settle nicely in your hand. Our only complaint about ergonomics is that the phone is tall, so one-handed usability is tough unless you have huge hands. Let's talk about specs. The HTC One is powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 quad-core CPU running at 1.7 GHz. The One has 2 GB of RAM, 32 GB of storage, with around 26 GB accessible by the user, and all the usual radios you'd expect. Not present in the One is a thermometer and hygrometer as found on the Galaxy S4, though we're not sure if getting temperature and humidity readings from your phone is something that is actually useful. Let's talk about the display. It's a 4.7 inch 1920 by 1080 Super LCD 3 panel, which gives the One an insane PPI of 468. You can't see pixels, so don't even try. The screen has fantastic characteristics like excellent viewing angles, above average contrast, and color reproduction that rivals that of the iPhone 5. Overall, the screen is a stunner. Running on Android 4.1.2, the HTC One comes with the Sense 5.0 skin. We don't usually like Sense because it's been too heavy and intrusive in the past. Sense 5 is the first version of Sense in a while that enhances Android rather than detracts from it. It was built for 1080p screens, unlike previous generations, which means that you get a ton of beautiful detail, whether in the calendar app, in settings, in the notification shade, or just looking at the battery indicator at the top. Sense 5 is delightful, save for a few annoyances. The first annoyance is blank feed. It's essentially a news aggregator for your home screen. While it is indeed nice looking and might be useful for those that don't feel like going into multiple places for their news and updates, its customizability is limited. You can only add sources that are pre-configured, there's no way to change how the tiles appear, and it just doesn't work the way you want it to. For example, we'd love to be able to give more weight to certain sources, like by having Twitter and Facebook updates show up first and then news flow in after that. But for what it is, Blink Feed is a neat feature. If you don't like it, you can turn off all of the sources and use another home screen as your main home screen, or just use a third-party launcher. This is Android after all. Beyond Blink Feed, the typical Android home screen experience is there with the addition of HTC's beautiful widgets. We just wish we could change the grid size beyond the tiny 4x4 because with so much screen space on the One, it would be nice to be able to use the home screens better. The same story holds true in the app tray, which doesn't use space well, and there's a huge weather widget at the top of the app tray. No one asked for a weather widget within the app tray, it's just not a good use of space. 
Customizing your home screens is a bit awkward in Sense5. For example, you have to drag icons to the top of the app tray before you can add them to your home screens. Not only that, but it's impossible to add a folder with quick dials or quick settings into the dock. HTC says they're working on a fix for this. As you would expect, Sense touches every stock application. The multitask UI, accessible with a double tap of the home button, presents you with a grid of nine app previews, which is really nice. This is infinitely better than the annoying 3D interface present in the last version of Sense for the multitask UI. In terms of performance, the HTC One is consistently fast. Everything you do, whether launching an app, going back to the home screen, opening a folder, taking a photo, replying to an email, or downloading an app, seems to happen on the same beat. The performance of the One is reliably and predictably good no matter what, and we love that. We almost never experienced lag, it's just fast. Even Asphalt 7, which seems to have shoddy performance on every Android we've ever tested, was pretty darn smooth on the HTC One, as good as we've ever seen. Now, let's talk about the camera. HTC is once again claiming that their camera takes amazing shots. They broke that promise with the HTC One X, and with the One, we're left disappointed once again, unfortunately. While the One does indeed have amazing low-life performance, in fact, it's able to see more light than our own eyes in some situations, the resulting photos often lack adequate color saturation and come out soft with a lot of noise sometimes. Not only that, but at four megapixels, you can't zoom in very much. Megapixels do matter, and we wish that HTC would get the camera right in one of their phones. Samsung can do it, Apple can do it, Sony can do it, why can't HTC make an amazing camera? Video recorded in 1080p also came out pretty lackluster in terms of color saturation, and they also had a lot of noise. But then there are some neat camera features, like Zoe. Zoe essentially takes a mini video when you take a photo. It seems strange, but it's actually quite cool. Uh, and this does a few things. First, it allows you to choose the best shot from about 20 resulting photos, and the phone tries to do that for you. Also, it brings your gallery to life as these little animated clips give you a new way to look at photos you've taken. Now let's talk about some test notes. Battery life is no better or no worse than most phones out there, like the Galaxy S3, iPhone 5, or Lumia 920. This means with moderate to heavy use, you'll get through a day. If you're going to have a long night out, you're going to want to top off the phone by charging it. Charging the HTC One takes a typical two hours to go from zero to 100%, uh, but the latest Snapdragon chips have Quick Charge 2.0, which is supposed to cut charging times hugely. We just didn't see that in the HTC One. Perhaps it's not enabled yet or at all. Our review unit was the international version, which does not have LTE support. We tested the one over AT&T over HSPA+, and generally got good results with only occasional loss of signal. We attribute this to the fact that the HTC One is not intended for the US yet, but it will be soon. It's going to be available on all four carriers in the spring, and we're very excited for that. Overall, the HTC One is one of the best, if not the best, phone we've ever reviewed. If you can get past the mediocre camera, the combination of fantastic hardware, loud sound, excellent performance, and a gorgeous screen makes us strongly recommend the HTC One. We give it a 9 out of 10. And of course, the Galaxy S4 is on its way out, and when it comes out, we're going to be doing extensive comparisons between that and the HTC One, but for now, the HTC One just cannot be beat. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to our channel if you like what you saw. Thanks for watching. Is the One X your next phone? Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocket Now and this. I'll do a second outro. It's your lucky day. I don't usually talk to you on camera like um, like Fisher does. And we upload them. Thanks for watching. Brupa. Dun 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 dun